Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all the important tips and tricks for your Oppo A5. In this video, I'll just be talking about tips and tricks and if you want to know about all the features offered by this phone, check out my video on best features, link will be in the description. Now with that said, first I'll show you some camera gestures. Now this is the default camera application and for the rear camera, if you click this toggle over here, you have this tap button. Now you can simply tap the screen to take a picture. It even works for selfies as well. So this is the front facing camera. Just click over here. Now click tap. Now you can simply click the screen to take a picture. Next we also have a gesture. So just select that gesture and you can simply show your palm now to take a picture after 2 seconds. Now this gesture is super handy especially for taking selfies. Now those were the two camera gestures. Next I'll show you how to use split screen mode on this phone. Now if you want to use two applications on this phone at the same time, there are three different ways to do it. First you can go to the recent apps page, swipe down on any of these applications. Now select split screen. Now that current application will open in a split screen window at the top. Now you can select the secondary application from the list over here or you can go to the home screen and select the secondary application from here. Now another way to do it is press and hold the recent apps button. Just do that. And once again, first application at the top, you can select the second application from here. Now the third way to do it is use the three finger gesture. Now this feature is enabled by default, but for some reason, if it doesn't work for you, just go to settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, then select app split screen. Now in this page, make sure this particular toggle is enabled. Now, if you want to open this application in split screen mode, swipe up using three fingers like this and that application will open in the split screen mode. Now for some more tips related to split screen mode, you have a button over here. You can resize any of these applications by moving it slightly down or up. And if you want to make any application go full screen, let's say if you want to use play store in a full screen window, you can swipe up. Similarly, if you want to use YouTube in full screen, you can swipe it down to go full screen. Next, we have some additional options. Now, if you click at the center, you get three options. You can click the last button to close the current application. That's usually the second application at the bottom. Now, if you click the second button or the center button, it'll swap the top and bottom applications. Now, if you swap the first option, you get all these list of applications. And once again, you can select the secondary application from here. Now, that's all there is with the split screen mode. Next, this phone even has iPhone 10-like gestures. So to enable that, go to settings, then scroll down and select smart and convenient. Then select first option, that's navigation keys. Then select the second option, swipe up gestures. Now we have different type of gestures, but the first one is the best one. Now, once you have selected it to go back, you can swipe on the right side like this or swipe on the left side to go back. Now, if you want to go home, swipe from the center and you'll go to the home screen. Now, if you want to see recent apps, swipe and hold. And these are your recent applications. Now, this phone doesn't come with a fingerprint scanner, so you really have to use face unlock on this phone. So to enable that, go to settings, then select face and password. Then select face and enter your screen password. That's your phone's password. Now you need to enroll your face. And just look at the camera. Just give it some time to read your face. And you're done. Now in this page, you can enable this toggle to make sure that your phone doesn't unlock if you close your eyes, just for some additional security. Now that is how you set up face unlock. Here's a quick preview. And as you have seen, face unlock is working without any issues and it is actually quite fast. Now for the next step, this phone even has features called double tap to wake and raise to wake features. So to enable them, go to settings, then select smart convenient. From here, select gesture and motion. Now from here, enable this toggle that says raise to turn on the screen and select screen of gestures and enable this toggle that says double tap to turn on the screen. First, I'll show you double tap to wake. Now, once you have enabled those two toggles, when the display is locked, you can simply double tap the screen to wake it up. And this is the preview. Now, if you have enabled face unlock, you can simply double tap the phone to wake it up and unlock immediately. Now, the same thing happens even with raise to wake. You can simply raise your phone, display lights up, sees your face and unlocks the phone. Now, using those two features along with face unlock gives you a much more seamless experience. Next, I'll show you how to take screenshots in multiple ways. Now, to take a normal screenshot, you can press the volume down and power button both at the same time. 
and your phone will take a screenshot. Now for some reason, if this is hard for you, just go to settings, then select smart and convenient, then select gesture and motion. Now enable this toggle that says three finger screenshot. Now once you're done, you can swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Next, I'll show you how to take a long screenshot. Now let's say if you want to take a long screenshot of this page, take a normal screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. I'll use the gesture now. Now, once you get a preview, click on it and now click long screenshot. Now you need to scroll the page to take a long screenshot. Once you're done, click over here and your phone will take a long screenshot. So here's a quick preview. Now for some more tips, while watching videos on YouTube, you can do a pin gesture to go full screen. Now the video will be spanned throughout the display, even the notch, and you get a very immersive experience. Now while watching videos or while you are playing games in full screen, you have some quick actions and quick shortcuts. You can access them by swiping down on the status bar that's over here. That's the notch actually. Anyway, these are some quick actions and these are some quick shortcuts. So first we have the option to record video, that's on screen video recording. Once you give the permission, you have a floating bubble over here to stop the video recording as well. And next we have an option to take a screenshot. There we go. Now the final toggle is to disable the heads up notification. Now at the top we have some more shortcuts. The first one is messenger. Right now there is only one application, but if you install apps like WeChat, WhatsApp, you can find them over here. Now once you click on any of these applications, you will see these floating windows and you can use these applications while playing games or while watching a video. Now those are some quick actions and quick shortcuts. Now for some more important tips, go to settings and then select notification and status bar. From here, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, enable this particular toggle. If you want to display the network usage on the status bar, enable this particular toggle. Now this phone also has a feature like ambient display. That is whenever you get a notification, display lights up and shows you the notification. So if you want that feature, enable this particular toggle. Now finally, if you're like me who hates heads up notification or banner notification that pops up over here while watching videos or playing games, you can enable this particular toggle to block all those notifications. You'll still get those notifications and they'll be listed over here, but they don't just pop up and be an inconvenience while watching videos or while playing games. Now going on next, if you want to record calls automatically on this phone, go to settings, then select system apps. Now from here, select call. Then select call recording. Now enable this toggle. Once you do that, all the calls, whether it's incoming or outgoing, will be recorded automatically. Next, I'll show you how to improve the audio experience on a headset on this phone. For that, make sure you're connected to your headset, then go to settings, then select sound. Scroll all the way to the bottom, select real sound technology, and make sure it's enabled. Once you enable it, audio experience on this phone via headset is definitely better than the regular phones like the Redmi Note 5 or the Note 5 Pro. Next, I'll show you how to change the default launcher and default applications on this phone. Let's say you have installed Nova Launcher, but whenever you press the home button, you're still in the default Opus launcher. So if you want to change your default launcher, go to settings, then scroll all the way to the bottom, then select app management, then select default app management. From here, you can change your default launcher, default messaging application, default browser, and so on. Now, if you want to change your default launcher, select home screen, and from here, select the alternative launcher. Right now, I don't have any other launcher installed, so there's only one option. But if you have any third-party launchers like Nova Launcher or Apex, it should be listed over here. Now, let's say if you want to change your default browser to Google Chrome. Once again, go to the same place, select browser, select Google Chrome, and select change browser. In the same way, we can change your default album application, video player, camera application, phone dialer, and so on. Now, next I'll show you how to change your default keyboard application on this phone. Now for that, go to settings, then additional settings, then keyboard and input method. Now to change the keyboard first, you need to enable it. For that, go to manage keyboards. From here, you need to enable the keyboard. Now go back. Now you need to set a particular keyboard as the default keyboard. For that, select this option. And now select the keyboard that you want to use as a permanent keyboard. Personally, I like Google's Gboard, so I'm just gonna stick with that. Now finally, this phone has OTG support, but it doesn't work right out of the box. So if you want to use an OTG pen drive with this phone, come to settings, select additional settings, and then enable this toggle. Once you do that, OTG pen drives will be recognizable. So guys, those were all the important tips and tricks. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video, and definitely check out my video on the best features. Link will be in the description. 
Now, if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.